Welcome to Magic Arcanum, I'm Ryan Gomez. Behind the scenes is Nicole Burdick, and we're so glad you're here because it's story time. Outlaws of Thunder Junction saw Kellen meet his father, Oko, in these set's six main chapters, but it left us with a pretty big twist in the final act. So if you've been wondering how Jace, Braska, and Loot fit into the bigger picture, you're in luck, partner, because I'm here to tell you what happens in the two epilogue chapters for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. But first, grab your lasso, your 10-gallon hat, and some new duds from Into the AM, the sponsor of this video. Okay, they're not exactly a frontier outfitter, but they are on the cutting edge of style with their amazing everyday graphic tees, polos, and their new all-day pants, which I am also wearing right now. Available in a range of colors with four-way stretch fabric and zipper pockets, these all-day pants are the perfect accessory for your next adventure. Even if that's just sitting at home playing arena. Save 10% when you use my link down below or enter promo code MAGICARCANUM at checkout, because the only thing better than a well-dressed wizard is a thrifty one. Stay inspired with Into the AM and their all-day pants, all day, every day, Night and day, unless you're a werewolf. I don't really know where I'm going with this anymore, but do me a favor and check out our sponsor so we can keep bringing you the stories behind the cards. Thanks. All right, now let's talk about what happens in the other part of the cowboy hat set. We start one year ago at the base of the invasion tree with Jace activating the Silex, exactly as he did in the Phyrexia All Will Be One story. For him, things go dark pretty much right after, but we know that's because Elspeth stabs him with her halo-infused sword and takes the Silex off his hands. Jace awakens within his own mind in a little pristine bubble, a sort of island paradise that is his mental fortress. The Phyrexian oil cannot reach him here, though it has consumed the rest of his body. From here, Jace creates an illusion copy of himself to go stand next to Elish Norn. Again, exactly as we saw in the earlier story, but now we get it from Jace's inner perspective. While his illusion stands there, the real Jace pulls out the halo sword and starts puking black oil everywhere. Jace realizes the halo has allowed him to live this long and retain just a toehold of self-control, but he fears the worst. He then hears Elish Norn tell him to go home, and his Phyrexianized exterior compels him to planeswalk to a place called Vryn, which is his birth plane. Realizing his body will continue to do evil things, even if a portion of his mind is still pure, Jace tries to mentally fight off the infection. He repeats to himself that he is in control and that the oil in his veins is a virus that must be burned out. He forces his body to react with a fever in an attempt to purge the corruption. And before you laugh, this kind of thing has been proven to work, even without magic backing it up. Sick people who practice intense meditation and recite healing mantras often report faster recovery, so maybe that's something to try the next time you're feeling blue. Anyway, Jace's efforts do help him overcome the pull of the completion, but that brings about a new problem. Instead of leaking oil, his wounds are now leaking blood, and he realizes he is dying. Jace decides if he is going to die, he wants to do it by Vraska's side. So he planeswalks to Ravnica and finds her body, broken after a showdown with Ralzarek, but still alive. Amazingly, she also has a small mental fortress, which Jace uses as a base to mount a comeback similar to his own. He tells her, I love you too, Captain, which was a trigger phrase established years ago on our first visit to Ixalan when Jace locked a portion of Vraska's memories away so she could deceive Nicol Bolas. The opening of that mental safe gives Jace some room to impart upon Vraska the same technique he had been using himself, 
talking your own body into fighting off the Phyrexian infection. He then picks her up and they planeswalk back to Vryn because it's definitely not safe to stay here on Ravnica. And as strong as their minds may be, their bodies still need a healer. The first epilogue chapter ends with Jason Verasca planeswalking right into a small house on Vryn where we meet a woman named Rana and learn she is Jace's mother. She also happens to be a former army medic, but all Jace can say is, please help us, mom, I am so sorry, before he collapses from pain and exhaustion. So just to recap here before we move on, Jace and Verasco were uniquely equipped to resist the impact of the Phyrexian infection. They had mental defenses already in place thanks to their previous adventures, and Jace getting stabbed with the Halo Sword gave his mind time to rally itself against the oil. Meanwhile, most of Vraska's oil got burned out by Ralzeric, but much like Jace, she had her own mental safe space where her personality was kept intact. Unfortunately, even with their minds safe, their bodies were certainly going to fail, were it not for Jace's call to bring them home to his own mother. And to be clear, he hasn't seen her in like 13 years. Basically, Jace grew up on Vryn, and as a boy, he was entrusted to a sphinx who was supposed to be his mentor of sorts. But that sphinx used Jace as a tool for his own schemes. Eventually, Jace snapped and killed the sphinx, but it was a very traumatic event for him, and it ignited his spark, which triggered his first random planeswalk. And out of fear or embarrassment or regret, he has not returned home since. But he's here now, at the start of the second epilogue chapter, hoping his mom doesn't freak out at Vraska's appearance, but all she asks is, so is she your wife? Jace finds some humor in this, but he's in too much pain to explain the complicated nature of their relationship. So he says, she is my world. And Rana, bless her heart, says, well, I can fix you both up, so just relax. We then get some lengthy scenes in which Jace and his mom reconnect and apologize for their actions in the past. And honestly, it's really great stuff that I won't even try to summarize here. If you are a fan of the magic story at all, you really should read this one yourself. My job is just to provide the bare bones recap with information like, we learn Jace's mom has a phoenix feather and we see her use it to heal Vraska's body. This feather, along with Rana's magic, burns out diseased tissue and forces it to regrow at an accelerated rate. So it is doing a bang up job of purifying Vraska, having already been used on Jace. Time passes and the two feel well enough to visit a nearby omen path and see it firsthand after hearing about it from Jace's mother. Vraska and Jace recognize the danger the omen path represents. Evil can now spread unchecked from plane to plane. Everything the Gatewatch accomplished, everything they did to contain the bad guys, none of it was going to work anymore. So Jace and Vraska admit the multiverse is broken and they are tired of fixing it. But what if instead of fixing it, they tried something different? They spend months on Vryn healing, talking, and planning. Inspired by the magic of the Phoenix Feathers, they conceptualize a rebirth for the multiverse, something that will clean and erase the broken parts and leave a safe and stable future for those who remain. We then get a series of short flashbacks. Nine years ago, Jace came to Thunder Junction to investigate the Fomori Vault while working with Tezzeret to find powerful artifacts for Nicol Bolas. They couldn't open it at the time, but Jace could feel the telepathic energies of a creature inside. Two years ago on Ravnica, Jace spoke of this vault with Tamio, who said she had heard of it and others like it. She called them relics of an empire lost to history, or lost to most, anyway, before producing a scroll to share with Jace. 
We then come back to the present, where Jace and Veraska thank Rana for all of her help and prepare to planeswalk away from Vryn. Only, guess what? It doesn't work. Veraska realizes with horror that although her body is fixed, her spark is gone, a fate that has befallen many other planeswalkers in the aftermath of the Phyrexian invasion, but not Jace. Frustrated but not willing to give up, they begin to formulate a new plan, and we again get a series of discordant scenes across time and space. About 12 months ago, on Eldraine, Jace approaches Ariat in her jail cell, disguised as Ashiok. Why? Because Vraska decided he needed to become someone nobody would ask questions about. Ashiok is the perfect choice, right? They are enigmatic. They can appear anywhere and do anything, and people generally keep their distance, which gives Jace the cover he needs to recruit his dream team. He's not doing it alone, though. Six months ago, on Ixalan, Vraska found her way there by Omen Path and reconnected with Malcolm and Breaches before heading onward to Thunder Junction. Ravnica, last month, Jace is the hooded figure observing Alquist Proft before knocking him over the head with a pipe to get a good look inside his mind. Jace wants to learn how Proft can manifest his mental projections into the world around him. It's not quite the same illusion technique Jace uses, so he thinks it will be a valuable skill for a later part of his grand plan, and he's here to do his homework. And finally, we return to the present day on Thunder Junction, shortly after the vault was opened and the creature was taken from within. Jace mentally connects with the child and learns it calls itself Loot, and upon digging deeper, Jace realizes Loot has an internal mind map of all the existing omen paths. He can see, in real time, new planes being born from the world tree and old ones dissolving into black holes of aether. So, loot is literally the key to everything, and the map to everywhere, and will be central to Jace and Veraska's plan to rebirth the multiverse. But the epilogue stops short of telling us how exactly they intend to do that. Instead, they use Loot's knowledge to pick up some cold brew coffee from Tarkir, mm -hmm, before packing their bags to visit a plane that will not see them coming, which seems to be exactly what Jace wants. And that's it. That's what happens in the epilogue chapters for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. To recap, Jace uses his mental fortitude to resist the Phyrexian infection and recovers the broken body of Vraska with his dying breath. He takes her to his home plane of Rin, where his own mother heals them both with her magic and that of Phoenix Feathers. Inspired by their second chance at life, Vraska and Jace pledge to remake the multiverse and concoct a scheme to adopt a creature called Loot. Loot will be the key to everything, as his mental map gives Jason Veraska the insight they need to start the next phase of their plan. It's a lot for just two chapters to deliver, and I know many of you were asking how Jason Veraska survived their time as Phyrexians. Hopefully this answers that. I do want to just really hammer home a few points. Jace impersonated Ashiok only for the Thunder Junction story, and only because he didn't want to be recognized as Jace, and he needed someone that people knew of, but wouldn't really question. This allowed him to recruit the team he needed, though we're never told how he found Oko, which is something Garrick has been working on for years. Sorry, Garrick, maybe someday you'll get the respect you deserve for being one of the Lorwyn Five, but for now, I guess, you can just have a cookie. Anyway, do you think these two epilogue chapters did a good job explaining how Jason Vraska survived and how they were able to add loot to their family? Do you think their plan to rebirth the multiverse will be dangerous? Or will other characters try to stop them and we'll have the Silex discussion all over again? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, visit my link for Into the AM and save 10% on their new all-day pants. Again, unless you're a werewolf. 
I can't help you there. Then make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the great stories you'll only find here on Magic Arcanum. We'll see ya!